Hey guys, it is Nick here with another Nick's Topics Walking Dead What If Topic video for you guys today. And today, we are getting into part 15 of What If Lori Survived. We are nearing the end of the Savior arc, in which the last part ended with Rick meeting Morales again. Except this time, there is going to be quite a significant amount of changes. For one thing, whenever Morales tries to hold Rick at gunpoint, Lori is there to back him up and try to calm the situation, in which is actually done a lot smoother because of the kind of person that Rick is now, being a lot calmer and more forgiving, and the fact that Daryl doesn't take the shot this time. For one thing, there's Rick and Lori both in the room who are handling it, and he is a much calmer person as Beth being alive. So, Morales actually gets to live here. And with his knowledge of most of the saviors, for what we can infer, anyways, since he died basically after we met him again, that will actually help the group out in time of need. Meanwhile... Jesus has the problem of Morgan going crazy and them getting into a fight, but it's a lot more pro problematic this time. Because Tara. Since Tara and Alicia, who I mentioned died a few parts back, were a couple basically dating back to when the governor was going to attack the prison again, and now she recently died to a rot... Tara is much darker because she had a much longer relationship with Alicia than she did with Denise. So she definitely is not in a good state of mind and actually backs Morgan up until he regains his state of mind. And then Jesus gets everything back in his favor. While that's going on, the whole deal with Ezekiel, Carol, and their people getting attacked by the saviors, Ezekiel basically being held by the one savior, all that goes per normal. Then we get to the scene where Rick and Daryl were about to fight over the whole plan of how to deal with the saviors. But this time, the conversation is dealt a lot smoother because of the kind of people that the both of them are, even though they've done things, obviously, still. Lori is also there to make sure that nothing happens to Rick and Daryl and that they don't start anything because God forbid they've had way too much violence already. You know, they don't need to add on brotherly hate because she even mentions in this that they've kind of formed a familiar brotherly bond. And Morales tries to get his end on this and explains that he knows ways to deal with the saviors effectively from what he knows about them. Daryl, after hearing this, regains his actual tough composure and says that Morales is lucky to be alive because he joined with Negan and the saviors. He betrayed their team after leaving them just to go to Birmingham. But ultimately, he relents and doesn't do anything rash. But he's still going to enact his plan, though, just behind their backs. Meanwhile, Rick still tries for a second time to go talk to Jadis and everything. Fails like before and gets captured and that all goes per normal. Then we get to the scene where Carl would originally rescue Sadiq. And he still goes to do that. And it's still him, but he's accompanied by somebody, Lori. Lori decided to help Carl whenever she saw him trying to rescue Sadiq. Now, you would think that Lori would actually pull out a gun here, since she had a gun on her usually when she was around the zombies or walkers. But being alive as long as she's been, she's actually grown smart when it comes to being around them. Like, really smart. So she has a knife along with Carl to help protect him and Sadiq. So that means that Carl, still having two eyes, by the way, doesn't get bit. But 
Just because of this, that does not mean that everything's peaches and cream for our group. But I'll explain more on that soon. Meanwhile, there's not going to be the whole Tara and Daryl talk about Dwight. Because for one thing, Tara and Denise weren't together. So that kind of takes away the whole prospect of both of them wanting to kill Dwight. So it's basically just Daryl. Now, the saviors at the gate still get imprisoned there. They still get chained up to the gate. But Gregory isn't there because if you guys did not watch the last part, he was offed by the governor because the governor saw fit to execute Gregory for what he did in turning on them. Meanwhile, at the sanctuary, Negan, Dwight, and Eugene, that whole plan with them trying to make sure that the workers are okay and everything else, that all pretty that whole scene pretty much goes poor and normal. Going up to the events of the truck hitting the sanctuary, all thanks to Daryl and Tara, I feel still too. They wouldn't talk too much about Dwight, but they definitely would talk together about killing the saviors. Let's just leave it at that. Aaron and Enid still have their trip to Oceanside, and a lot of the events after Sadiq gets rescued by Lori and Carl would pretty much play to their original standards. Then we get to something majorly important. The talk that Carl had with Negan at the gate. Well, that still happens. Why is that? Because you said that Carl did not get bit. Well, I would feel that Carl would still want to do this, regardless. Because he had been around Negan a good bit. But where is Lori? And why isn't she at the gate with Carl leading on the speech? Well, like Michonne in the original, she had to help rescue everybody from basically being found out and murdered. But is this a little bit too convenient? What really happened during the rescue with Sadiq? And does it have something to do with Lori? And that's where we're going to be leaving things for the moment. Now, I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope that you guys are enjoying What If Lori Survived as a whole. And I hope that you guys are intrigued about what really might have happened during the rescue with Sadiq and how it might involve Lori. But I'm not going to spoil anything. I will leave that to your thoughts. Leave a comment, and I will see you guys next time.